Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of APC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's webcast. Before we begin, we're going to do one final sound check to ensure everyone on Facebook, ZoomGov, and DCS can hear us loud and clear. So if you could, on your respective platforms, please type in LC in the chat so we can know you can hear us. Okay, we are getting loud and clear across the board. Sound check is good. Joining us today from the AFIPS team is Colonel Brian Hinsmark. Over to you, sir. Can we get loud and clear? Yes, sir, go ahead. Right. Outstanding. Well, thank you very much. So, welcome to the August webcast for the Air Force Integrated Personnel and Pay System, otherwise known as AFIPS. I'm Colonel Hinsbark, your lead for the Functional Management Office, working with our contracting partners, our business leagues, and our contractors to build the added capability of compensation or pay to the existing human resource system, supporting our airmen and guardians out there. Now, we're nearing completion of development and have some good information on what's going on now and what you can expect in the near future. Next slide, please. So, as you'll see, this is the agenda, or the obligatory slide, where we tell you what we're going to tell you. And anyway, the focus for today is that we're going to let you know what you can do now in your Air Force Integrated Personnel and Pay System, and what you need to do to get ready for full deployment. Now, you may have already noted, we are going to discuss two-phase rollout, focusing the majority of this webcast today on the first phase of APIS, the account claim, and read-only self-service otherwise referred to as ROS. We'll also find out on some actions you can do to prepare for phase two, or full deployment of the system, where you will be able to access self-service actions, and the Air Force will have a fully integrated personnel and pay system for our entire department of the Air Force. We hope to provide some information that can help you looking forward. In addition, we have a host of experts online in the development and rollout of this capability who can help answer questions on your mind today or the questions that you may be getting from airmen and guardians out in the field. As we're broadcasting over three platforms, there are opportunities to ask questions via chat, and we plan to address those toward the end of this web webcast. The team will be collecting those, and we'll address them later. Also, if you don't want to ask a question in this forum, but have something you want to an answer to, please contact my change management team and we'll get back to you with appropriate answers. Next slide. So we should be coming up with the assets timeline. Now, before I discuss the timeline, I want you to bring, I want to bring you up to speed on what's been going on with assets. For the past three years, teams of programmers, functional experts from the personnel and finance communities, and other individuals have been defining what the system needs to do, going through the process of programming the million lines of code which focus on our 71 core processes we're addressing. These are the actions that we need to improve or add to our existing personnel system. Now, a key aspect, we did not want to break the current military personnel system and have carefully navigated all the integrated relationships built into the system so it can handle our $39 billion annual payroll on day one. We've got to get this right before we go live. Now, AFIS will provide airmen and guardians with a modernized technological solution that includes capabilities and time-saving features, which they presently do not have today. Not only are we adding payroll, but we'll also be working initial workflow and self-service capabilities for you, the user, which can be expanded upon as the system evolves. We've got something we can build with. As a result, 
The military personnel system will absorb military pay and leave management responsibilities from the defense joint military pay system, providing a single authoritative record for our Department of the Air Force total force military members. That's active guard and reserve. Bottom line, APIS is no PDF with the added pay module. Now, while the system is still in development and has been in motion for a long time, we are not far from our full capability deployment or go live. In fact, we are currently scheduled to go live in June of 2022. This is just a little over 10 months away. However, before this phase two deployment, there are still many actions we need to collectively do to move this ball forward. We're moving into the critical testing and training phases, which we will see how the system performs and refine it as needed. We have multiple testing events over the next 10 months and are engaged with the contractor currently in testing, which is focusing on the requirements and operability of the system as developed. We're also going to be working cybersecurity tests, performance tests, with a final testing provided by the Air Force Operational Test and Evaluation, Evaluation Agency using our base level and AFPC experts as actual users and testers. We also have multi-level, organizational, and full force training, which will be discussed a little bit later in this brief. There will be base level training, and it will be designed for all our audiences to include the individual user, commander, support staff, and our trusted agents who will be working within assets to process personnel and pay actions. This training will help us be ready for full deployment and will continue as we become comfortable with the system after go live. Now, we have two total force assets capability deliveries. The first delivery is account, claim, and ROS, as I've talked about, providing the user access to a read-only self-service account allowing airmen and guardians to see their personal information within MILPDS now on this platform. Then, second, the broader release will be the assets full capability, which will provide users with the tools not only to see, but touch and do the things within assets that they need to do, offering a full, true operational personnel and pay capability to include payroll. As phase one deployed last month, I'd like to take a few moments to focus on this phase, what it means to you, and how we can ensure we are ready for phase two. Next slide. So, phase one, read-only self-service account creation. In July, we deployed phase one to our total force airmen and guardians. You are now able to claim your AFIS account and gain access to AFIS initial capability that Ross role to review your data. In August, on the unit training weekend for our Guard and Reserve members, all of them were afforded the opportunity to now claim their account. Because of their unique mission and potentially limited time on orders, they have the ability to access Ross at any time to include their duty weekends or when most convenient to them as a user. For our active duty members, July started with the initial invitations for our airmen and guardians to go claim their account and access their Ross role. The invitations are sent out via MyPurse. Now this is not spam, it's not phishing, it's an actually legitimate email asking folks to go out there, claim their account, and go ahead and re read and review their data. So once you receive this initial invitation, instructions are included on what you need to do and where you can find resources to help you. Each iteration of the invitations are focusing on a birth month. And everybody, everybody, all our total force, guard and reserve, and Air Force and guardians should receive an invitation no later than the end of this year. Now the process to claim your account should take approximately five to 10, maybe 15 minutes to complete. And will allow you to re review your records and ensure all the information is correct in the system at your leisure on your timeline. Key note is Roth role is only read only capabilities. You don't have the capability currently because you have not deployed assets in full force to go in there and 
change information via the ROS role. It's more a peek behind the curtain, getting you familiar with the system, your information in the system, and allowing you the capability to correct actions through the normal processes now to ensure we're ready for go live. Now, this ROS role, this new role that you will see, you'll see a lot of information that you normally would not see through another single platform. For example, dependent related information or other actions which may be hosted in DEERS or DMDC, the Defense Manpower Data Center. These are actions that we are pulling together for you for an opportunity to review them and correct them through one Roth role. Now, our airmen and guardians are now able to acclimate themselves to the system while also ensuring that their information is correct. Now there are no bells and whistles on this initial Roth rollout. And the screens may seem simplistic, but the data is there and it's for you to review. So, if and when you detect an error, you should immediately engage to correct that information through the normal processes you use now. Depending upon the discrepancy, updates can be requested through the local MPS or the PSM, the personal service manager that works within the FSS and the MPS. A self-service micro incident request may be required through the Total Force Service Center. Now, when you do these updates, some updates will take place immediately. Some may take a few days depending upon the frequency our partner systems refresh data within the military personnel system. To save your time, recommend that you wait a week after you've made a change to go back in and check to see if the data has been updated. The overall goal is to fix inaccurate information when discovered, thus ensuring that the most accurate information transfers to assets when we go live in 2022. You can check your data at any time. And you should also, during those critical life changes, getting married, congratulations, or other actions, a new baby, again, congratulations, we won't talk about the bad things that may happen, but when those changes do happen, Please ensure you go in and get that information updated now. The worst thing that can happen is that you do not do this and it affects your pay once we go live. We don't want that to happen. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about phase two or the full capability of Apis. Again, claiming your account now and validating your personal information is essential for a successful rollout of phase two. This is both for you and us. During phase two, airmen and guardians will have the access to all assets time-saving features and self-automated processes. Some actions which used to go through finance will now be automatic in your pay record. Bottom line, there will now be a single authoritative record for every airman and guardian, making it easier for you as members to view and validate your records and get paid on time and based upon what's in the system. Now with APEX, Airmen and Guardians will also be able to initiate pay action requests, perform leave actions, manage HR processes online, and reduce the amount of physical office visits and paper transactions that they need to do day today. Now you heard me right. Assets will be the replacement for leave web, and all leave will be processed through assets. This is important for you. And finally, when we do everything right, after full capability is released to the total force, we should see a decrease in pay issues and an increase in the efficiency of HR and pay processes so our airmen and guardians can focus on the mission. Next slide. You may be asking, how do I claim my account? Or how do I help my airmen and my guardians claim their account? Well, it's pretty simple, and it's all here on this slide. Our Total Force Guard and Reserve members should have already had this information. It's available out there today. 
and our first 50,000 active duty members have already received their invitations. Now, if you don't have the information yet, or maybe it was accidentally filed in a deleted or spam folder, then the information you need is here on this slide and it's available in our resources. Now, for those folks that are getting the invitation email, it's simple. Again, five, 10, 15 minute process where members can claim their account using their current active military common access card and authentication certificate. It's simple, and if you haven't done this yet, well, 57,000 of your teammates already have. So you can use this infographic as an easy step-by-step -step process on how to claim your account. Now, while the process to claim one account is intended to be intuitive, there is a link to user guide and a short video on how to claim your account if needed. It's also within these resources, information on how to correct actions and take care of the, um, the information in slides like this are available within those additional resources down below. The intent is that all of our Department of the Air Force military members claim their accounts and review their data by the end of 2021 and absolutely most positively before go live. We need to ensure as much as possible we can correct the information within the system. Understand we're not going to go out there and we're not going to force anybody to do this. This is all on you and should align with when you want to do this on your timeline when it's best for you. Of note, we do have the capability to know who has claimed their account and check their information. However, you do not want to be the one trying to claim their account the first time you want to take leave. Or worse, trying to explain to somebody why you didn't get paid correctly once Africa goes live because there was something in the system that could have been fixed many months ago. It's important to understand that phase one does not provide a lot of capability-wise for our users claiming their account, but it's critical data-wise for phase two when the airmen and guardians have access to the full capability. Now, APEX will eventually support over 550,000 users. Claiming accounts and engaging in the systems ensures that we test the system platform. We stress it, and we make sure that it's technically stable. Active participation by our Total Force members will not only ensure that the data is correct, that the system can support our demands, and we can engage with an uninterrupted experience to execute our personnel and pay actions. I hope this makes sense. Next slide. So, question on your mind may, may be, has phase one deployed without issues? Simple answer, no. But the great part about having this two-phase approach is we can find and fix actions well before ever getting to full deployment. Today, I would like to cover three main access issues and a few personal data issues that you or your fellow airmen and guardians have encountered so far. These include access issues like claiming an account that there's no role for Roth populated on the information screen, an Oracle eBusiness error that asks for a username and password, or maybe even receiving that access denied. We'll talk through the current solutions for each of these system access issues, what we're finding now. However, it's important to differ di differentiate system access issues with personal data issues. Personal data issues will be resolved from some virtual options as well as for those listed here, going to your CSS, MPF, FSS, or uh, going through the Total Force Service Center. Next slide. So for the first common access issue, no active responsibility. My Ross role is not there. Unfortunately, for some of our folks that have logged in, they do not see that user role populate right away. Now, this is the most common issue we're experiencing. And it's upon the first login, and it's known as an Oracle error or a processing action that needs to be happening. So while a solution is being developed, the interim solution is to log in initially, wait 15 minutes, and then reaccess the system to go to your account. And at that point in time, your read-only self-service responsibility should have populated, and you can go and review your data. 
frustrating? Yes, it can be. I know. Why can't we just get it all done in one fell swoop? What I'd like you to think about it like is opening a bank account online. Upon the initial application, you log into your account, and then after some verification, you're finally given access to the funds and tools within the system. So, I'm going to give you two options. During phase one, if you have time, go and claim your account. If your Roth role is not there, then log out, grab a coffee, energy drink, chat up a friend, post a tweet, take a break, whatever you want to do. And then, in about 15 minutes, come back in, log in, your Roth role should be there, and you should be ready to review your data. Now, if you're rushed and you don't have that time, go claim your account, log out, go perform your mission with excellence, grab a nap, solve a 5,000 piece puzzle, enjoy a vacation, doesn't matter, when you come back, your role should be there for you to go ahead and validate your information, check it out, and still do your corrective actions. But when you are ready, you can come back on your timeline to review your data. Next slide. So, number two, you get an error screen. Some of our users have been experiencing this that says, your Oracle eBusiness Suite account has not been linked with a single sign-on account that you just entered. Something to that effect. Well, we're working with the system managers on this one, but we need your help to troubleshoot why this is happening and to who. So while we work a solution on our end, what I want you to do if you get this error is contact your component Athos POC or more importantly, maybe my Athos OCM team at the email here and tell us your first, last, mill initial rank component uh, active guard reserve in the email and let us know what's going on. Let us know what you're seeing. We'll help submit the trouble ticket there and troubleshoot the issue and, them, and then get back with you. Next slide. Another common error, maybe you have encountered the one where it says access denied. Nobody likes it. However, before you go through the computer, go throw the computer out the window, what I recommend is close and reopen your browser. Try it again. Also, ensure you're using your military CAT card and choosing your military authentication certificate. It should work. However, if you continue to receive this error and only have one CAT and nothing else is worried, working, please let us know so we can help find what the root issue is. Again, contact our team, contact your component POC, give us the information we need and we'll get back to you. Next slide. Now, we're also seeing some other access issues. When accessing the system, ensure that you're always using your military CAT and military authentication certificate as noted before when trying to access your assets account or claim it. We have some of our special warriors out there with multiple caps. We understand that. It's like they're trying to win the final hand at poker. In any case, what I want you to do is I want you to use that military CAC and the military certificate. If this is you, please make sure we're using the right one. Otherwise, you're going to be left outside the door, knocking at the door, wondering why you can't get in. Think of a system like a defender at the gate, and you're rolling up in your uniform, and the defender wants to see the picture of you in your uniform when they scan the cat. Otherwise, questions might form. So, it's always been an issue for some of our, us of our users also when they try to access Apple's backend system when it's down for maintenance. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens. If you encounter that, there's always a good check out of the Air Force portal. You can go there and see the status of the system to see whether or not no PDS is down. Again, it happens very rarely, but it does happen, and it would not let you claim your account or get access to those military, MILPER, MILPERS pages, which are linked to your Ross account. Bottom line, if an issue persists, contact your Athos POC or the Athos OCM team, and we'll try and figure out what's going on. If you can, provide a screenshot of the error message you're receiving with your email. 
and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Next slide. Now, we have some pre preparations that we need to do for our total force users out there as we get ready for go live. It's essential that all our active duty Guard and Reserve members claim their accounts and verify their personal data. I cannot stress that enough. This is for your benefit as well as ensuring the system operates and pays you like it should. Now, if you're experiencing a personal data issue as opposed to an access issue, you may be able to use DEERS or VMPS to update your information or contact one of your local folks over the CSS, the PSM, the MPS, or even contact the Total Force Service Center to resolve that issue. There are several options for you to ensure your data is correct. If you're having the issues finding the right place, try our resources page or visit your customer service center. Ahead of phase two, we're in the process of creating a myriad of tools, resources, and guides to help you and help our entire force in this transition. It will be important to get these access system supporting tools out there to help our airmen and guardians navigate the system. Common, also with an understanding of those common user initiated actions such as leave requests, allowance and compensation act actions, as well as being able to complete and correct self-service data within the APIS system. Next slide. Now, phase two preparations for our three FO and six FO communities. Now, while Ray Ross is only read only, uh, we are preparing the 3F and the SNPF communities for phase two full capability with both the functional and training capability. I'm sorry, I'm getting a call here. In any case, the audience for these trainings focused on those with a military payroll or action within the system. Both the 3FO and the 6FO communities can start their preparation now by completing prerequisites training. Think of it like ensuring a good foundation on a home. Also for our core train and train the trainer cadre, it's important to note that before these experts can participate in the system training led by our contractors, they must complete all the prerequisite training. In addition to the functional training, functional collaboral at collaborative efforts between the two communities will begin in March of 2022 to ensure a successful knowledge transfer and familiarize our users with the system they will be working in. Training is one of the most important lines of efforts we've got, and we've got to get this right. Just a footstone. We are still in development of a host of training materials to help our total force in this transition. So please keep your eyes out and open for new materials as we go ahead and populate those myriad of hosts and those platforms out there to help you. Next slide. Now, we also have phase two full capability training that's going to be coming up. And the second part of the training is that system training. That system training, we have scheduled dates out there, and we've had to reassess those based upon some of the testing actions that are pushing over to the right. But we have three different parts, which is important to understand. We have a test group, a train the trainer group, and specific training for our payroll operations, which will operate out of the our DFAS partners, which will be transitioning over to AFTC and the OL up there, executing strategic and high operational actions. To support the system instruction, Personnel system delivery guides and job aids are in the process of being developed. Again, the prerequisites are absolutely essential for our folks going to the system training as the contractor will only be training on system actions and how it presents itself. The rest of the training will come through the tools and resources being developed now and for our tra trainers to execute training at the base level for our total force. If you've been selected as a tester or a training trainer and would like more information, please visit the A1 and FM training hub on the AFIPS program hub SharePoint page. All the links are on this page and the resources are on the next slide. Next slide, please. <clears throat> our, offer, op, our 
change management team is working to ensure that you have the resources needed for a successful asset rollout. This slide displays a host of links and many of those interplayer actors that are working to make sure that we get this right. These resources on the left hand side are what you have access to and can share throughout your networks. Claiming your account, resources are posted on our assets portal page and we strongly encourage our Total Force members to go out there and use these resources, validate their personal data within the new assets responsibility. These roles and resources include user guides, step-by-step -step processes, account claim processes, high level, easy shareable step-by-step -step and infographics, uh, the ability to claim account videos and ask access of your, app, your data and a slip sheet on ways to correct your personal data. All the information is out there and available for you. For other Apple's program information, including the two phase phase two full rollout capability and deployment. You can check out the resources available on our portal page, the AFPC assets page, and the assets program hub SharePoint page. If you have any training questions, please check out the new A1 and FM training hub, which includes growing facts section, which will hopefully address those most commonly asked questions or concerns with the rollout of assets. If you have any questions in the future, please send them over to our organization box noted at the bottom of the slide. Next slide. Bottom line, we're trying to be as transparent as possible and we would love for you to contact us. The FMO team and our experts out in the HR and FM community strive to be as transparent as possible and address as many questions now and as we go through this process before we go live. For our user self-service options, there are several websites you can visit and get the latest news education materials. As stated, assets, related questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to our team via email. They can provide you with resolution to your question or concern or point you in the right direction for knowledge. Now I thank you for listening and watching today. I understand some of you are at late hours, some of you are at early hours, and some of you are enjoying the wonderful sun here in Texas. In any case, I hope that this presentation has enhanced your understanding and awareness of where we're at and where we're going with assets in phase one and phase two. Now at this time, we intend to answer some questions and there are some key experts and leaders on this call to help. I have Chief Stanfield, Colonel White, Mr. Menendez, Captain McElroy, Lieutenant Colonel LeBlanc, and several other experts from our field that can hopefully address any questions or concerns that you may have at this time. Next slide. Elise, I'll turn it over to you to see if you have our first question. is also an option, correct? hearing the actions from the lease? No, no, no sir. sir, we're not. Okay, uh, Elise, are you going to call in? Okay. <laughs> a 
Okay, let's see here. Um, let me go back here. Will a reminder be sent to members who did not claim their account prior to assets launch? We're going to work with business on that side, and yes, I'm going to say now that we are we have the capability of identifying who has not claimed their account, and there will likely be a reminder, probably too many reminders, for them to go out there, again, given multiple invitations, to claim their account and correct their data before we go live. That probably will not start until after the new year, though. Um, the slides are going to be posted out there, so yes. Will there be an overlap period between leave web and assets? If members start period of leave in May and return in June, how will that be handled? So once, right now, the going in actions as we are developing is once the system goes live, all new leave applications will need to be done through assets. The application leave web will be able to resolve those actions that were open or remain as issues in the system till we can get to a good point and close that system down. But all new, to repeat, all new lead actions will be through the AFIS lead application process. And there will be more information sent out on that. Thank you guys for starting that, Edwards. Or Wayne, sorry. I am the PSM at my base. So are we going to be fielding sign-in issues for 9,000 military members here? What we're doing right now is we're trying to address as many of the issues for our users, and those are the simplified actions for our members who are going to be interoperating within Athens. So no, you're not going to have to deal with 9,000 issues out there. However, as a PSM, you will be helping with the role responsibilities out there for your installation. And that's going to probably be a little bit more expanded than what we have in Mel PDS right now. Um, another question is, I'm just at a space level PPDS. Okay, nope, sorry. Okay, I'm at a base level finance collated with an MPS for the sole purpose of training them on six F knowledge and data cleansing. This now seems like this isn't needed. It's absolutely needed. So when we have the partnership between our FM and A1 community, we must have the ability of passing information and understanding. And there's going to be a lot more that is going to be required in that close relationship, especially as we get ready for go live. Chief Stanfield, I'm not sure if you're online, if you've called in or not. Did you want to uh, address that at all? Yes, sir, thank you. So team, yes, um, as Colin Hemsworth mentioned, the training for first pay data cleansing, as well as uh, functional training of the transfer of knowledge from the FM community to the A1 community must remain in place. It is critical to one, to make sure that we prevent uh, uh, erroneous pay data from transferring over because this AFIPS ROS only allows a view of what the military personnel data system shows today. It does not show what the pay record piece shows. So for example, we could have a case where um, years or dependent data or something of that nature could show one thing and no PDS and and they know that hey I have three dependents so it'll be imperative that if that's showing they have two dependents that they come and they they bump all this data so we're relying on, on the member themselves to verify their record as well as to clean up existing uh, first pay data issues and to prevent those data issues from carrying on and once the assets goes live and then as well as all the training efforts you're doing that is teaching our 3 fo airmen the, the, the why, the what, the where, the how of, of military pay. So it is imperative those actions continue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. And appreciate all the efforts that you have been doing, Chief Stanfield, 
our PMO partners out there, um, Ms. Dorsey and T, as well as our FM uh, career field managers and our total force career field managers out there as we make sure that we're doing the right things out there and we're posturing our force well. Uh, there's a question in there from Ms. Dixon on a fully trained SITF that retired and now working in FSS. So you're one of those special nuggets out there, those, those individuals that will understand both processes. Um, I would work with your superintendent out there to ensure your training is available to participate in the training at your base level. Um, so again, contact your superintendent. We should have more information on that. Um, there was another question which stated end users who have logins Login issues, you contact a component lead for assistance. For our Garden Reserve members, they've had a very active change management process which have identified some different component leads out there. And those are available through the uh, NGB uh, A1 and the ARPC A1 or Reserve A1 actions. Now, uh, you can contact them, but you can always contact us through the email through our OCM and we'll make sure that it gets to the right place if it's not within uh, our umbrella to answer. Thank you for that question. Um, and do the members have to wait for an invitation to claim their account? Nope. The information is out there right now. If you look on that infographic, it has the website where you can go out there and if you are so inclined, you can go claim. Now we will continue to send out invitations because not everybody is type A and going out there to hard charging trying to find out the information. A lot of them, some of them, may actually be pro procrastinators out there and may wait till the last minute. For those folks, we'll continue to send invitations. But if you want to go out there and claim your account now, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, Do all members need to be approving their account? I'm not sure what the question is on that, but they need to access their account. They need to go out there and claim their account. So every military member, guard, reserve, active, need to claim their account and need to do that before go live. And sir, just to jump in there, this is Captain McRae. Absolutely. I answered it a little bit wrong in there in that everybody is going to have it in that the, their account. You just need to make sure you access it because as soon as we go live, this is where all of our self-service actions are going to happen. You must log into your account in the future to be able to take a leave once we go live. So it is it's critical for you to make sure your information is correct and then it's critical at go live for you to be able to do any self-service actions. Over. Very good. I read that wrong. So thanks, Dad. and appreciate that. Um, will full-time civilian CSS be responsible for assisting with this? And if so, when will we get access? I recently received an email, I already have no PDS access, but I'm not getting an option for getting access to happen. So for our military members, phase one is to review the military data within the system now. So this is total force, military members, active guard and reserve. As we posture and get closer to go live, there are going to be two opportunities that you as a CSF member have or a civilian force, HR workforce has out there. First is in the training platform or that sandbox that we are going to be experiencing and executing our training in preparation for go live. And then sometime before go live, you'll be asked to claim your account and your role as a HR user in the AFID system. Now, you won't have any personal data in there like the military members will, but you'll have a role that will be assigned to you as a CSS role where it will give you the opportunity to do the things you need to do to support your commander and your airmen and guardians assigned to the unit. Due to our IT, we are unable to access no PDF with Chrome. Okay, so I stand corrected. Um, use the um, use Microsoft Edge if you can. Um, otherwise, there is a program out there, if I'm not mistaken, Desktop Anywhere, which is affording the opportunity to get through and access the AFIT system through normal processes as we've evolved in telework. Mm -hmm. and well, sir, again, go ahead. Sorry, not, not go ahead. Sure. Go for it, Chief. 
I was just going to clarify. So if you are trying, if you are a, an individual with access of MIL PDS today, um, it, you can only access the Java side of MIL PDS through IE, through Internet Explorer. It is not accessible through the other uh, internet um, browsers at this time. Um, however, the, the Affix ROS has the capability for, um, for accessing, uh, to claim your account portion can be done. But like I said, the, the Java side for existing HR users today is only through Internet Explorer. Over. Thank you, Chief. And I see also Tech Sergeant uh, Blasco out there had also indicated that action. Thank you. Chair McElroy, did you have something? Yes, sir. Um, going back and forth here, uh, one of the questions was leave. And um, leave web will be going away. And in the future, as we go live, all leave actions will happen through. Um, and, and I mentioned that in the self-service um, earlier in my answer. Okay. Thanks. Um, yes, sir. And also just want to mention, we are getting a lot of questions right now. We, we're probably not going to be able to address all of these, but we will make sure that we're collecting these and, and we're getting these on our uh, frequently asked questions page, and we'll make sure that we're working these answers. Outstanding. Um, I see in uh, the CPTS charge of A1 and training A1 counterparts and the big questions they have is what roles our CSSs will have um, and what they'll be doing to compute uh, final paychecks and determining debts. Uh, again, we're working through all those training actions and yes, we are working on the civilian PDs right now. So these are all actions that are still in the works and not finalized yet. But we have identified the roles for our CSSs, and those will be populated once AFIPS goes live. Captain, did you have anything else on that? Um, I would just say on that, sir, just like you said, we, we're working these roles. We are working with our developers to, um, we have our HR roles almost completely complete to where we're, we should, as a development team, fairly soon have access to them. And then as we look at everything that will happen on the payroll side, those are continuing to be developed, but we're very close to the point where we, we have these finalized and we can start seeing where they are ourselves. It should be just a kind of a, a broad brush stroke here. As we go into AFIS, um, the actions on the mill pay side will be a little bit more all-encompassing. As we look at that total force service uh, system here, it will be where um, you will be able to, as a as an NPF, you'll be able to take care of guard, reserve, and active duty all throughout that, that single source mill pay role that you have. And more information to follow up on this, but just kind of a, a broad stroke there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Chief Stanfield, did you have anything you'd like to provide out to the audience today? Uh, so first off, thank you for the opportunity to be part of this today. And, and thank you for the plethora of questions. They are all very good questions. And as Captain McElroy alluded to, um, we'll probably won't be able to get them all answered. But I would like to do a plug for the A1 and FM training hub. If you are a, a an A1 or an FM airman on this line and you have questions regarding the functional training efforts, please access the A1 and FM training hub. Uh, the master training plan is located out there along with other timelines and resources and what system training is, is um, the schedule is, is available for us. That will also be posted out there and more details will be following. So if you have any questions, there's also a plethora of, of frequently asked questions out on the A1 and FM training hub um, where they are component specific and they are also, if they are overarching and they are for all. Um, I, I know we have some concerns about um, our, for the uh, force support population about the manpower study. Please know that um, the manpower community is dialed in. They are in conversation with um, the, the AFIPS FMO team that's on, the, that's on this brief today um, to determine what what the workload will be, what what is FM doing today that that F, that we won't do, and, and and that you know that FM doesn't do today, and that we will do. Um, what will be automated, what won't be automated, all of that will, will is being researched to define what our workload will be. But please know that when this goes live, 
we will not have a, a plus up of, of personnel, meaning that the co-location uh, airmen that, that are identified and agreed to between the, the FSS and the comp polar leadership or the FM and A1 leadership, that will be the, the additional manpower, and that additional manpower will remain until the system is declared FOC, and that's projected for 2023. Um, we'll need to have the workload assessed to determine if we earn more manpower, if we will uh, remain cost neutral in manpower, or if we um, it's so efficient that it, it creates uh, a, a need to decrease our manpower. So um, just be sure when the system does go live, keep track of how long it takes you to do your processes and your tasks for both the CSS and the MPS. This information will be critical uh, for us to determine um, what that workload will be. So um, I know it's a big shift, but, but that's why we started training as early as we did. So please make sure you are focusing on completing your, your FM to A1 knowledge transfer, your functional training. Please make sure that you are updating that in your training business area, in your training records. Um, because that is how we will verify if you will be attending system training. Um, that's how we will verify your, your ability to attend. Um, so uh, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, the only Heather got Sandfield on the gal. So um, send me an email and, and we will get you the information and the resources you need. But please know that the Pixapo CSM, Chief uh, Mass Sergeant Chief Duhart and I, we are working hand in hand to make sure that that both communities are prepared for success and we will have additional updates coming on our functional training here in the coming months to where we will start giving you some detail of what we're liking to call the the how and the where which is some of the the calculations and and give the ability to more detail as the PSDVs um, become uh, to completion so thank you thank you chief I appreciate that so Colonel White, who has been leading our business process office over in AFCC, is going to be moving on, and she is going to be turning over the reins to Mr. Menendez. But I uh, want to say thank you publicly to Colonel White for everything that she has done thus far over the past year, and I want to offer her an opportunity to add any comments to this action with respect to the business side of the house. Colonel White, over to you. Leaders out there, I just want to say thank you um, for continuing to, to spread the awareness and the understanding. Um, while the office today at AFPC is a, a team of one predominantly, um, and uh, it, it's been awesome because it, it's been a true team effort across the board uh, for all the help and support that I've gotten along the way. And so I just want to say thanks um, as we turn things over to Mr. Menendez. He's going to be fantastic. Uh, he's getting spun up pretty darn quick and um, he is your AFPC belly button of the future, so don't hesitate to reach out to him. Thanks to all. Thanks, Colonel White. Appreciate all that you've done, and welcome on board, Ms. Menendez. Um, Colonel Blanc, did you have anything for the group? Sorry, sir, uh, I've turned that in mute um, while I'm answering questions. Um, can y'all hear me? Yes, you're good. Um, so uh, what I'd say to the community is if you have any questions out there, um, obviously we're, we're looking at the chat, we're scouting through and we're trying to answer as many as we can. Um, we may not be able to answer them all during this webcast, but what we'll do is we're going to collect these questions and provide answers and update our FAQ page based on the answers. Um, given the number and the volume of questions, it may take a, a few days, um, but what we're gonna do is jar these questions into uh, categories and try to answer um, as many as possible uh, under uh, a category um, that's logical. Um, in the interim, if you have any specific questions uh, that you didn't ask here or that you think of later, um, you can always contact the uh, A1 OCM team and we'll put the email address in both chats right now. You can contact us with any of these questions and we will get you an answer as fast as we can. Um, we are seeing a lot of questions uh, right now and we will stay on to answer as many as we can. Uh, but in the event that your question didn't get answered, please just let us know. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh. Thanks, appreciate that. So we're coming up at the end of the, the time here. Again, um, I 
appreciate everybody dialing in today. I know that you have busy schedules out there. I know that you're executing a mission, and we have a lot of actions that are going on in our military, in our Air Force, in our Space Force, and we have active, engaged operations right now where we need to send our thoughts and prayers down to those downrange to make sure that they understand we they have our support out there in, in what they're doing, and we're doing the best here to make sure that we can take care of their personnel and pay actions and get ready for go live in June of 22. Um, I see that there are a lot of answers popping up there in the chat actions. Again, if you need to, by all means, you can send the OCM team an email. You can even send me an email. I am the only Ken Lark and McGow. So if you have something that's burning on your mind and you would like an answer from me, by all means, just send me an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Sir Ramirez, are we coming up on our hour time? Yes, sir. We are just about here at the end. Um, if nobody else has any, does anybody else have any comments? I just want to say thank you to the AFPC staff and especially your expertise in making this happen on three different platforms. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. I just want to uh, just caveat on uh, Captain McIlroy's comments that the field support team will be consolidating the questions that we received on Zoom and DCS, and uh, we will send that list over to all the participants and briefers um, for today. So to all of our guests that are watching, um, if you feel like your question wasn't answered, don't worry. We're actually going to capture that and send it over to the right folks. So. Uh, we will stay online for a few minutes after uh, 1500 to ensure that we don't miss any questions. But if nobody has anything else, uh, thank you all for joining us today, and we hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.